Welcome back to the WGLE, you guys. I know it's been quite the break, but we are here and we're ready to bring you all the action. And of course, I'm not alone in doing so. I'm joined by the band of beautiful people. Okay. Ollie, of course, uh, the most majestic of all. How majestic creature. Yeah, I'm good. Um, it's been nice to be at home with the family over Christmas. Uh, mm -hmm. Relaxed, ate a lot of food. Yep. Got a few more pounds on me. But uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> super happy to be back. Locked in the studio for uh, a few more months. It's great. Yeah, we won't be let out anytime soon. And of course, it's not just me and Ollie. It is the beautiful Melly. How are you feeling today? Are you ready for some Thank more tech? Absolutely. I, I can't wait. It's my. I mean, it's been so long. Yeah. And as you already said, the break was big and it's time for some tanks. It certainly is. And of course, we do have a hell of a lot of games to go through today. So we'll be starting to look towards that. But before we do, let's remind ourselves how the last part of the season went down. The Wargaming League Europe started with a bang, when new team KB went up against second place finishers in Season 2, Pentasports. The newcomers managed to best the more experienced lineup of Penta in an impressive 5-3 scoreline. Wombats on tanks, although only playing two matches in the first half of the season, started their season well, with a solid win over Strong. However, Strong Siemma have had the worst first half of a season with seven straight losses and no points. Tornado Rocks, the winner of the Continental Rumble, had a shaky start, but have seemed to have found their feet finally in December, with only one loss thus far against Ding. Perhaps the biggest surprise of this season is Oops, known also as the Tough Giraffes as well, a team that really struggled to get into the Gold Series, but have finally really found their form now in that new format, beating some of those more experienced teams. Finally, we get to see a Ding that is performing well. Season 1 was a massive disappointment for them. However, with the changes coming in with Season 2, it's really started to work out well. Out of range, the team that came first in the Silver Series has had some really lacklustre starts to their season. Perhaps they can change that in the second half, as they have only managed a tiebreaker win and loss. Synergy, despite some brilliant individual performances, really aren't living up to their name. They've been struggling throughout this season to really consolidate what they started. One of the strongest results for Tornado was when they beat Kazan Crew 5-1. Kazan Crew has perhaps had one of their best starts to a season, with only one loss so far to Tornado Rocks. Not surprising after not qualifying for the Season 1 Finals. Hopefully that has refreshed your memory as to how the first half of the season went down. So, you know, maybe that merry time during the holidays hasn't completely, uh, you know, blurred your memory. So anyway, let's take a look at those rankings as well, because that is what all of that first part surmounted to, is how the season was starting to form up. And Ollie, what did we make of the first part of the season? So I think it's obviously best to start from the top. I mean, Kaza Crew, the best start of the season, I think we can safely say they've ever had. Um, a fantastic run, of course, they only lost against... Uh, Tornado. So, yeah, really good for them. Um, they've usually been pretty inconsistent, at least in the first part, and they kind of made up for it later on. Let's see if they can continue that good run. Ding, I mean, super impressed by them. Um, after having such a bad season one, it's really good to see them, um, you know, forming together well, playing together well. Mm. And uh, those lineup, lineup changes, especially with Rulzik, has really worked for them. Uh, Oops, new team, fantastic to see them in third. Tornado Rocks, uh, apart from losing to Ding, you know, and having a shaky game against Synergy, they've, you know, they've been pretty standard. I think they're going to be getting better as well. KB, new team, great to see them. And then it, it kind of comes a little bit, you know, questionable. I mean, Wombat's only played two games because yep. of uh, WCA. So we're going to get to see a lot of them. I tell you, a lot of them in the next few uh, match days. 
Uh, then from there on down, I mean, those those teams, especially the Polish teams, really need to start getting their uh, their stuff sorted. Yeah, they certainly do. But a name you mentioned there that I think we're going to be highlighting today at the very Ofsted is going to be Wombats on Tanks. They are a team that most would have tipped to be very toward the top. But of course, as you mentioned, they hadn't played too much just yet. So it's now for them to catch back up. And they will be our first matchup of the day going up against Synergy. So I, I, I think it's maybe a good little test of the waters for Wombat on Tanks, but they are still quite by a large margin the favourites there. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Synergy, they've been inconsistent. They've got some player skill issues, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I mean, Wombats, they've, they've been playing a lot of 754 for WCA, which is the last 754 tournament. So the question is, are they really well practiced? I mean, we just mm -hmm. had the Orthodox Christmas um, a few days ago, so a lot of these uh, Russian speakers won't have had, um, you know, a lot of time to train, obviously, with their families and stuff. So I'm not sure. Wombats could be a bit rusty. They certainly could. We'll, we'll be finding out very, very soon. It's quite clear when we watch these guys if they've been warmed up or not. But of course, following that, we have two other games as well. But anyway, that aside, I think it's time we actually hear from the teams themselves, starting with Wombats on Tanks. Well, we will hear from them hopefully at some point. Maybe not now, but it's going to be a secret forevermore. But we can kind of delve in a little more as to what we kind of expect from Wombats on Tanks because they were kind of the masters, let's say, of EVE for quite some time. Kazna always hot on their heels, a couple of other contenders. But it was predominantly them doing very well for themselves, always able to compete with the CIS regions as well. And they've always been coming out on top to mm. some degree within Europe, at least top three to, to, the, you know, to the most amount. Now... As you said, there is a possibility they're a little rusty here. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be the telling signs if we're going to start breaking down what to expect from them? Well, I think we'll have to see how much they've trained, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of these teams, they've kind of changed their meta since the beginning. You know, we saw uh, the first few games, a kind of a slow gameplay, and now it's started to speed up a little bit. <laughs> Um, for me, I mean, I, I want to see if Wombats have really shaken the 754 star, where it's not so much about hitting the shots, um, you know, aiming. It's more about just trying to get in those brawl, trying to get in the better positions. Um, and, you know, it's a of, less of the skilled game back then. And, you know, Wombats didn't have the greatest WC. They, they came, you know, um, out of the top three, which is, of course, not good for them. Um, wow. And uh, I think, you know, it's good to see them and they, they can actually get into 768. You know, it's good to see them still together as a team. And, I mean, just to be honest, they're going to be the ones fighting against Tornado. They're going to be ones fighting against Kazna. Yeah, they, they have some extremely tough opponents. As you said, they kind of um, eluded most of the initial games. We didn't really get our head around what they can bring into the season. But this is a time we will be learning what they can do. And, of course, it's not just about what we think of these teams. It's also about what you guys at home think and their opponent's synergy and what they can bring to the plate. Now, Melly, you know, the people at home are always very opinionated here. They vote in their droves for these teams. Absolutely. But this one, I think, is going to be hard because people haven't seen Wombats on tanks this much this season. That's they haven't true. got that little bit of kind of um, hindsight to it. Do you think they're still going to be the favourites here? Oh, well, our, all the veterans from the league, they know how the P, uh, the, the players of World of um, WOT, yeah. Wombats on Tanks, World of Tanks. <laughs> That's well, why they might did it, be, by the way. Might, be, might be the reason, <laughs> exactly. Um, yes, I fell for it, sorry. <laughs> but yes, um, as said, the community know the players and they know what they're capable of and they know what the team is capable of. And we have seen them perform the past seasons and they pretty much are going to do the same hopefully yeah but uh well we'll kn know for sure in a few minutes i guess currently the voting stands 63 percent for uh Walmart's on tanks which is surprisingly low in my opinion but people no, i agree the vote is still open so head over to our facebook page facebook.com wgleu and get yourselves involved by guessing the exact score line by predicting just have a wild guess you might win one of three bonus codes containing a premium tank gold and premium days and of course a garage slot so get involved and also if you don't have facebook well twitter is always the other solution to that problem um yeah Predict the score lines over there as well. Use the hashtag WGLU to make sure that we can see your tweets. And also, if you have questions, find them right away. I will ask our experts. Sounds good to me. But I, I think you raised a really good point there, actually. I, I throw my mind back to the previous seasons. And, you know, any time we had Virtus Pro, now known as Wombats on Tanks, it was up in the 90s. I, I, I think there was maybe one time when we saw Kazna getting more than, I guess, 20% of the vote. And that was quite a surprise to us. But... Mm. 
this is this is a new start i feel for them almost this could be quite a test i think and i think the audience is feeling that as well they're not putting all their faith in them just yet maybe after seeing this match they'll go okay they, they've still got it they're still on the ball but hearing the results coming in from wca that's not exactly the most telling point and we'll have to find out i can't wait to see how many of them actually Absolutely. predict those score lines yes. too because sometimes they, they differ don't they they'll go for the vote on one but they'll write down something a little different don't they they, they do well, that's the other option so if you vote for your team well if you say okay i love team a but team b is pretty pretty sure you're going to win don't worry just um have it written down in the text field and we'll figure it out don't worry and also um well one and tanks haven't played the half half of season almost yep. and uh the other teams might have an advantage there but they mean like more fluent in their team plays and still figured out the ways the league goes and the game d d develops over time mm, right there's a lot up in the air here, and I think Synergy as well, if we flip the switch towards them, mm. they have a lot to prove this season. I think you already kind of hinted towards that as to their kind of consistency issues, them, you know, literally lacking Synergy, the irony of it all. Um, they do have some good players that can perform, but they don't ever seem to be on the same page at the same time. It's mm. like, okay, well, we've got two people playing really well, but the rest are making some errors here and there. Is, is that a lineup problem? Is that something you can fix? Is it an in-game leadership problem? Mm. What do you think the issues are with those guys? I think they've been through so many changes, uh, so many roster changes yeah. um, in the last two, three weeks, and they had so many issues at the end of season one. You know, they they, they qualify for the pre-playoffs; they're in the top six, but they didn't do anything. I mean, they couldn't really perform because, uh, I mean, they simply didn't have the the kind of um, players in the right place. They, you know, weren't attending the games. They had all sorts of issues, and that really uh, cost them dearly. And uh, so I think they're kind of shaking off those blues a little bit. Well, we are live into the game, ladies and gents. It is Cliff to treat us back towards the start of the season again to refresh our memories. And on the defence will be Synergy to start off with one bats on tax on the attack as such. And what do we make of this thus far? Um, well, pretty standard lineups. I mean, of course, uh, uh, 9.13, we saw some new tanks come in, the Czechoslovakian tree, which we didn't get to see last season. Um, the patch was released only one day before the last match day, so we didn't include those tanks in there. So you'll be seeing, you know, the Skodas coming out, the TVPs. Um, one of the most insane tanks I've ever played, definitely. I mean, it <laughs> seems to glide over things. It doesn't slow down for hills. It's like T-50-2. Great gun. Um, obviously not very much penetration, but, you know, when you're a high skill player, that you can kind of mitigate that. So really interesting to see what we can, uh, you know, see of that tank um, in the future. And then, of course, you know, Wombats starting from the north in the attack. They have the hill straight away. Um, Synergy just trying to play a little bit more defensively. They have that artillery played by Happy Bubble. Hmm. Excited to see what he can bring to the forefront. And the irony being back, you know, many a moon ago, it was always Wombat on tanks. And then Furthest Pro, very cautious and tentative to picking up any sort of new touch, new addition. But seeing the TVP already coming out to play with Just Cause, you can tell this tank is certainly worth its weight. So already nice little bit of initial work from Brainet, getting some good damage down very early on. You can see Dreamlike and Murs both suffering at his hand. But what do we make of this position thus far? It seemed a very passive start for Synergy, very, very far towards the south. Yeah, I mean, Synergy are a passive team. They're, they're one of the teams with just the highest win ratio on the defensive side, just in general, and 75% on the uh, defensive side on mine. So yeah, they're always a slow team. They're a passive team. They, they sit back. They're not particularly effective um, in a lot of respects, but on mines, it's it's definitely one of the better maps. They've won half the rounds on this one, so I'm looking forward to seeing if they can continue that. Obviously, you can see Wombats there on the maxi map. Starting to gather up towards that western side, that's pretty typical. I mean, you have two options, basically. Um, you either go towards the western side, towards that cap, or you push down the one line, go for that exchange um, against those two tanks, which makes total sense considering Mursky's already half health or you go to the right side and you try and engage the I-7, which is definitely the harder thing to do. So liking this aggression for Wombats. It's good. They, they've noted they've been able to weaken up some of the some of the defenders, let's say, on that western front, and Povel and Bishop looking to maybe exploit that one as much as they can. And already they'll be heading through. Dreamlike does connect one, and actually a little bit of damage going to come through, but not enough to take them down. Shots on the fly going to come out. None connecting, and good damage being dealt by Synergy. They're not going to give up Murs and Dreamlike for nothing. They might eventually go down at this rate, as they are outnumbered. But let's see if they can take anyone with them. Three shells split between them at this point. Merz is going to just get swept aside. Coca-Cola going to make real light work of him. And, well, that STB stack almost coming out. Dreamlike 
does finally get a little bit of respite as the fire comes back. Good cover comes in, but Povel will take him down. And that is a two. Make it a three-man pickup here as Breakneck was just working his way through the other other teammates in the background. But we are seeing a counter surge from Synergy towards that hill. Yeah, they are going to push up there. I mean, that's pretty standard here. Once you're getting flanked, you always have to try and take some sort of advantage back for it. I mean, you're going to lose those tanks regardless. I'm pretty surprised. I mean, Happy Bubble is definitely the, the biggest counter towards that western side push. Because those tanks are in a stationary position, you can obviously hit them, but you can see Mielov now has 20 seconds reload, and Kusok can do a lot of damage in that time. Yeah, I think Mielov can lose that now. <laughs> He's just going to be held in place, pinned down, and Kusok can just enjoy this one. Shell after shell, doing the damage. Great next round, John, leaving just two players standing for Synergy, and it's not going to be the start they wanted. Wombats on tanks have yet to lose a member. Bishop is still alive by a whisker, but he is live nevertheless. And Breakneck just kind of being the real, real, like a wasp in the backside here, just really being a nuisance to that IS-7. It looks like we might see even a clean sweep coming out from Wombats if they keep these boys alive. A couple more shells will seal the deal and a perfect start again for Wombats on tanks. Coming back here on their first go at Mines. Yeah, nice stuff. Uh, didn't lose a tank. Um, very methodical. Didn't really make any mistakes. Um, I really liked the, the push on that Western side. And, uh, you know, getting that early damage onto Mursky in the TVP, fantastic work. I mean, yep. that gave them the opening. That was the logical thing to do. Uh, Kusok managed to keep himself alive on the hill in that STB. Um, and you can see, you know, Synergy just lacked a lot of volition there. I mean, they needed to keep um, Wombat's at bay. They need to keep him on that Western side. Hap Happy Bubble can make the shots. He can, yep. you know, possibly one shot or do a lot of critical damage to those uh, pushing tanks there. So, yeah, I mean, Synergy just couldn't hold on long enough. No, it, it's a real shame because it seemed as though once that initial damage was dealt from the hill, their plan, their ideas just kind of f fell apart. You could, you could almost categorically see Wombats on tanks just working through any advantage. This was something that they were very good at even in the previous game mode. Mm. If you showed a weakness, they would exploit it very, very quickly. And as soon as they were able to forge one, I think it was Breakneck who did that on the hill, um, just firing the shots across, uh, it worked out perfectly. There was nothing else they could do, and they have it. So already the first round going going into the pockets of the Giants, the veterans themselves. And maybe you guys now will be starting to consider that voting as well at home because now they've seen okay a little bit of what they can do okay they're, they're you know still performing as we'd expect there's a lot more to be seen of course this is the first map coming in mm. there's nothing too much to be said in regard of how the whole game plays out but certainly there's your dabble back into tanks for all of you guys who've been dying for it at home i know it's been a long time um in between the season but of course we have to let people get merry over the you know the holidays exactly. and it was a good holiday time but um let's talk about the switching because you highlighted that synergy are very good um let's say previously on the defense didn't really work out that time they have a good track record on mines what do they have for an attack is, is there much to write home about or does that passive nature really not lend to it yeah i mean that's the thing with synergy the passive nature is, is definitely their downfall because they're not going forwards and, and making the plays and i think that definitely uh you know is it, a detriment to their team they need to be, be being aggressive they need to be working that one out i mean they got 25 percent win ratio on the attack on mines and it's one of their most played maps um so yeah i mean Looking at the lineup they've got, I mean, they've got a lot of autoloaders there, basically exclusively autoloaders, and uh, obviously with that artillery piece. Um, so that's that's a extremely deadly lineup they've got. Obviously, it's not particularly flexible. Once all those autoloaders have expended their shells, those STPs will just make mincemeat of them. Yeah, timing becomes absolutely everything, which is what we're going to be seeing now and keeping our eyes towards going forward if they do get caught out on that little bit of time in between. And we all know that Wombats on Tanks can exploit any weakness. They'll see that lineup and see the same sort of downside to it as you did, and we'll have to wait and see what they can bring coming into that half, of course. I'm very excited to see myself. 1-0, though, if you aren't just tuning in currently, and it is into the hands of WOT, aka Wombats on Tanks, just to mess with us and Melly, you know, whenever we say their name. They, they are masterful trolls, to be fair. Yeah. I remember speaking to the Kasna guys after we did the first show match um, of the new game mode, and that was, where was that? Was that uh, Continental Rumble. Continental Rumble, you are correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and even they were saying, you know, oh, these guys are trolling around, <laughs> this is so hard to deal with, it's so annoying. And the same with Na'Vi as well, they were doing exactly the same thing. It's like, these guys, they are masterful trolls, they do keep it well in mind. But still, we hadn't seen much of them until this point. This is what we were excited to see, if they were going to come in and really bring the guns a-blazing into this season. Now they can finally start playing, of course. And what do you make of their performance thus far? It was only a dabble, of course, it wasn't yeah, a big I mean, enough picture. It was solid, the fact they didn't lose a single tank, I mean, it gives you an idea. Um, the curious thing is, I mean, 754 is where Wombats have really excelled. And yep. with this new format, 768, we're seeing a lot of, you know, newer teams starting to do well. I mean, Oops 
KB. They've been really improving because it's a brand new format. It's brand new to everyone. Yep. And yeah, of course, there's a lot of skills which are transferable. Um, if you're a good player in a, in a tier eight tank, you're a good player in a tier 10 tank. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I'm really looking forward to what Wamas can do. They've always had their kind of little bit of extra personality, their own kind of spice. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. At the beginning, at least, they are sending a sizable force up towards the hill. They obviously don't want Synergy to take it. And Wombat on tanks are going to take this fight. Look at that damage coming in. Hilf has found Kusoko, so it's not a clean one this time, but already the damage is going to start piling up. Now, Synergy, of course, do have that time where they become mildly redundant, but still, so far, Wombat on tanks are starting to dwindle. Breakneck is down to nothing. Coca-Cola really clinging on for dear life. Nice little pick up by Dreamlike then, just using that bat chat to the best of its capability. And now Breakneck looking vulnerable. Is anyone going to dare to take him down? Dreamlike has one more shell to expend. Meal off in the back lines goes down. Now, Everyone is looking a touch more vulnerable here. Wombat on tanks, this is the time to turn the tides. I don't know why Synergy is not just pushing forwards. I mean, they have such a big advantage with the two tanks down. They can just push across, get the corners, and uh, start to take down these Wombats. And as they do, they take down Breakneck. That's exactly what you need to do. Piece by piece, they are falling. And this is a great performance from Synergy. Taking the fun, taking this into their hands. Three players are low here. Just Cause could do some damage, but I think he knows this one is done for. This is going to be a one-to-one. -one. Synergy showing that they can bring some fight. Ooh. Just cause with a Beast. double though. Big play coming out. Two more shells to be put down. Dreamlike is low. He bounces the one onto John. Gonna have to look for the follow up towards Dreamlike. He does get held. He's being chased down, and here comes John. This should be the closing moments. He does get the third. This is brilliant stuff from that man, Just Cause, but he knows it may be a little too late in the days. He's down to a one shot, but a good little individual performance. But in the end, it's Synergy picking it up. Lovely performance from there in the end. We said their issues, quite passive at times, don't always take the advantage they had. Yep. Finally, they went, all right, guys, you know, we've got an advantage. Let's take it. Yeah, I mean, it took them a little bit of time, but they, they knew that they, they had an advantage and they went forwards. And as you said, you know, they managed to win that engagement. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, Wombat's going for that exchange. It means basically suicide. I, I can see what their logic is like. Okay, so the autoloaders, maybe we'll have like a five second window where we can shoot where they won't have the reloads. But, you know, this TVP is, you know, took about a 24 second reload there. So, um, yeah, th that's not really a big enough window. Um, the AMX 50B is similar reload, 25, 24 seconds. And um, yeah, they just went down very, very quickly. I mean, I think one of the tanks lost 1,000 hit points, 1,100 hit points in maybe three or four seconds. And that's really not recoverable. Um, and then, you know, Synergy had that position where they could go around the corners and get the one shots. And, you know, they did it very well. So I in that sort of vein, would you say that that was one bats on tanks, maybe not necessarily respecting their opponent? as much or just overlooking some of the maybe the more tactical side of things? Where, where do you think you stand on that one? In my opinion, they thought they had a window, they thought they could go in, but they simply couldn't. They, they didn't have you know the timing they thought they had. I mean, you can see that breakneck, he did a great bit of work right at the end. Um, but uh, just cause, you know, he he was uh, just a, just a man, a beast, a machine. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people don't give, you know, just cause the respect they should. I mean, he's kind of one of those quiet players who's not like, a, you know, like a breakneck or a Povel or a power slide or whatever. But he's consistently great and, um, you know, a long term member of Wombats. Well, this is the thing, you know, there's two types of good players in my mind. And, you know, there's the people that everyone, you know, notes sometimes as the flashy player, the, the guy that can make all the kind of, you know, the, 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 the sexy, sh you know, shots. That's, that's what it is at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys will just pull off these plays like Applewell used to be one of those players to me. But then consistency comes in and he'd do that maybe one out of four games. But let's say if you're, you know, the likes of just cause on the other hand, he'll be doing consistent damage throughout these games, constantly doing the background work. And it's these two different type of players, of course, it, it's very hard to see the internal workings of these teams sometimes and how integral a player like Just Cause can be to the lineups actually gelling together and playing very well with themselves and uh, obviously against the opponents. But let's turn our attention to the next map, of course, because yep. that one is going to be loading up here. Cliff going to be coming in. Any sort of standout points for you on this one? Because Synergy was the more favorable side, let's say, on defense. Mm -hmm. It was a good map for them. Um, they only picked up on the attack, funny enough. Um, but what are their sort of chances on here? Well, um, I, you know, they're, they're a decent team. Um, they're okay. Um, but again, you know, it's really hard to tell because, for instance, we haven't seen one map at all, basically, on this map. <laughs> and Synergy, they haven't had the greatest results on this one either. Um, yeah. And looking at the lineups, it's just auto to heaven right now. We've got bat chats across the board. We've got TVPs across the board. We've got the classic T, uh, T49, that light American heavy tank with a big derp gun. 
and the AMX-30 prototypes to French uh, Tier 9. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of different tanks, uh, a lot of, bat a lot of uh, auto loaders, a lot of damage. And, yeah, I mean, it, because both the teams have gone for that, it's, it's going to be about who can play them best. And that's a worrying factor if you're Synergy as well. If you're taking Wombats on one-to-one -one in that sort of capacity, you've got to be brave. And the irony being, Wombats used to be the ones who'd kind of embrace that Russian style a little more, the CIS style of splitting towards the western side. This time, though, it's Synergy starting from the south on the attack and getting the ones moving towards it. But it looks like Wombats could be walking into a bit of a trap here if they commit over that ridge. There's players towards that western side, there's players towards the south, and they can get caught right in between. But Happy Bubble is getting melted, and that bubble is about to burst. He's, he's down to a one-shot. He will just about make it away. And I say just, and no other shell will whiz through. But he has been already kind of, t you know, shown to his chair by this point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Wombats go for the early exchange. I mean, it's really normal that a one tank, if you're going to go for that Western strategy, which Sinji has, to put one or two tanks there. You can see the Badger and the T-49. Of course, Wombats just want to get the, the a bit of early damage they can. They've got the higher ground. Um, and now usually how this plays out is... Uh, it, the Western side team Synergy will start going for the corner exchanges because you know, they can't do anything else. They usually send a tank up north towards the B line and uh, basically try and pincer in Wombats. Now, if they can get a tank in the B line, they just need to spot the tanks on the hill and they can get the shots. But Happy Bubble does go down to Coca Cola and one of the newer additions to Wombats joining in season one. So, yeah, that's a good pickup that, uh, for them. Um, that tier, tier 8 tank, of course, n not you know, entirely decisive, but. You know, we've seen tier 8s do 3,000, 3,500 damage quite frequently. So, where is the counterplay going to come from here? I'm going to be surprised if Synergy commit to this, but they are. They're trying to trade it out, and they do. Milov does mind, manage to find just cause, but again, favorable trading towards Wombats here. Breakneck's gone and picked up one. This is not going well for Synergy. They made almost a restless push here. They looked like they wanted to avenge their fallen teammate, but Happy Bubble. Uh, went down a mile ago, and now look at these guys just walking in like lemmings. What is Synergy doing? They're trying to take the fight, but really, they're just walking into the sights of Wombats right now, who are set up well for this play. Milov's in no man's land. Shots luckily not coming through just yet, as a couple of tanks were waiting for those shells to become available. Now Breakneck wants blood. He's going chasing, and Milov is going to be left as a, just a pile of scrap by this point. Two players there for Synergy. They had the upper hand to some degree. Sure, they weren't in the best position, but they had something to do here, and now they are really Really working against the odds. Dreamlike doing some good damage towards Karitz, but at this point they're taking so much fire from the back lines. You can see that TVP finally picking up Karitz, but there we go. This is surely going to be over and done with in a matter of second, seconds once they find that final tank. Yeah, I mean, perfect crossfire there from Wombats. Great stuff from every angle. And uh, yeah, really just picked apart synergy. Yeah, it, we haven't really seen that tactic be entirely successful, even 754, and you can see why. If the other team is just prepared, mm. they have the higher ground, they ha more importantly have those tanks up north, they could just get great side shots on. There's also loads of just pumping, you know, shell after shell. And of course, you know, Synergy got the early exchange. They got the first tank off, but, you know, only a few seconds after they lost one of their own, and then suddenly they realized, hey, we're in the worst position. But I can see their logic again. Um, Coca-Cola, he took out the T-49 Happy yep. Bubble, and they were like, okay, that's our opportunity. There's a, you know, tier 10 tank down, a bat chat, out of position. We can go and we can get those overmatches in. But, um, you know, as, as we've seen in tier 10, it's not like 754 where you can necessarily, you know, just get the overmatches and uh, you know win those situations. Mm. Uh, the the damage is a lot higher. Um, bounces are a lot more um, unpredictable. So yeah, I think um, you know great positioning for Wombats. Patiently played. You know they went for the objectives, but also kept the ones they'd already controlled. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. I, I didn't really see the logic in what Synergy were doing, but now you mentioned there were actually two of the bat chats were out of position because it wasn't just Coca Cola on yeah. its own. So you, you, there is logic to it, but it just seemed a little kind of hap-handed. It was a little bit heavy-handed, I, I guess would be a better word for it. As to how it's done, they were just like, okay, well, we, we know this is an opportunity. Let's just take it. Well, it does show that, that they're at least kind of um, trying to read into the game, trying to take the opportunities they're given. But mm. teams like Wombats on tanks, they, they will punish you, and they were very well set up for that, just to receive you know the three tanks, essentially, that did really get mauled once they kind of crested over that middle ridge. But the side switch isn't always a big factor in this map. It's something that we really have very rarely seen ever coming, which is why I yeah. genuinely very enjoy this map. I think it's one of the more even out there if you exclude you know the, the new complete you know symmetry based map that yeah. <laughs> you know that doesn't quite count. But outside of that I think this is one of the ones that we can see something enjoyable on. Now what do you reckon we're gonna see coming out from Wombats on tanks now they're arguably on the more kind of aggressive stance to a degree? Yeah I mean I think you you know you brought a good point there. I mean 
you know, if if you have a map where the, the caps are very important, then you can kind of see, you know, how the game style changes. But because of Cliff, you know, it's it's you know, the caps are important. We've basically never seen in two seasons of Cliff um a single cap. No. I can't re I maybe I can't I, think maybe I saw it once in WGNA, maybe I saw it once here. But even maybe in season season four season four or something like that, but yeah, I never see it. Um yeah, I think Wombats um I think they they are going to play a little bit more defensively, um, you know, sitting back um, when they're on the attack and uh, just let Synergy go forwards because, you know, okay, we had that a little bit of an anomaly on mines where Synergy won the attack, um, but they usually fail pretty bad, as we just saw as well yeah. on Cliff. Yeah, and th this map does take actually quite a lot of coordination, even in the kind of smaller elements as to creating the crossfires and being able to dismantle them, of course, when you're trying to find an opportunity going into it. And this is one of the things that we might see being a minor downfall here that could turn into a major problem for Synergy, but that's moments away. So guys, once again, do make sure you get on Facebook right now, get those predictions in, get those votes through. Keep Melly busy, she's keeping eyes on you as we speak. Do not fear, you'll hear from her soon. But let's put our attention back toward the game. 2-1 is your current scoreline to Wombats on Tanks, but Synergy again, and have their opportunity. They picked up the attacking round last time. Can they do it again? Wombats on Tanks will be in the south, of course, this time, and Synergy up in the north. Yeah, so um, Synergy is just going to go forwards. Um, looks like they're just going for the middle area. And uh, Wombats as well. So we might just have a classic old uh, brawl, uh, like we saw in 754 a lot, just a brawl in the middle and whoever managed to get the better exchange. Now, normally the team that goes for the lower side, so they can kind of flank around on the other team, wins these exchanges, wins this uh, this kind of uh, position. So it doesn't look like both team, either of those teams have done it. Um, you know, Wombats aren't even going up towards that uh, lighthouse, and uh, same with Synergy. Yeah, Dreamlike's got a, a slight vertical advantage, but not too much. He's going to be playing it relatively cautiously, just trying to peek around that rock as best he can. And I think it was Breakneck who actually got off quite lightly in his position. A shell bounced off him. One did connect, as you can note here. But still, he does manage to stay alive. And this is going to be a bit of a stalemate to a degree. Last time, Synergy just warts in towards Wombat. I don't think we're going to see the same thing, thing here this time. But just cause and Bishop, I believe that was, looking maybe for another angle, another opportunity to come through. But Synergy playing quite passively this time and actually remaining calm here. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of a weird situation where... You both teams are just uh, not willing to go for the peaks, not going for any damage. Crete's, of course, in that 251 all the way to the west. I think he could possibly hit a couple of those shells if Dreamlike, for instance, peaks. You have a batch out of Bishop down towards the right side, but you can see as well Synergy have got that covered with uh, the TVPs. And you know they're doing that. They're doing that thing where we where you have you know tanks back, so the attacking team if they go forwards, you know just get caught into a crossfire situation. They get funneled in and they get taken down very quickly. And that's why Wombats are very cautious. They're just trying to win some exchanges, trying to get some early damage. So when they do go forwards, which of course they inevitably have to do, they can uh, you know do it successfully. Happy Bubble though has been spotted in that western side. Now that's very important because I mean Kareets would go undoubtedly up towards the B line to shoot Dreamlike and John. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll see Bishop in that bat chat, link up with Kareets, take down that RU251, and that'll open up, so open up the whole map for Wombats. Okay, there's, there's options are plenty here. But the things we've said before, Synergy sometimes don't put themselves in the best positions, but pe speaking of bad positioning, Just Cause is just getting caught out at the moment. He just took over 1,000 damage just on this peak, trying to make maybe a little bit of damage more towards Milov there, but Milov is still standing, kind of using himself as bait here, allowing likes of Dream like John, um, and I believe that TVP in the background doing a lot of damage in this. This is absolutely outstanding stuff, and already you're going to see them trying to stay alive in this. Kusok going to be coming through, taking a little bit of a peek down, starting to get some hill presence. But you can see Karita creating that crossfire again. Synergy, they had an advantage to begin with, but mm. they didn't actually trade out favorably in their, you know, in, in the end. It's it's quite baffling. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think they were waiting for one match to go forwards, but I mean, if you're going to put a, a tank in a, in a vulnerable position, and a fairly big one, a TVP, um, it's going to get taken down. Now, one that's, you know, they're not particularly far ahead in terms of hit points. I mean, you can see both teams pretty much have the same. Um, but, uh, you know, I, they have the hill now. They can start to lock Synergy down. You know, they really can't move Synergy at this point in time. Happy Bubble is, is, is locked down by Kareets. Um, Crespix, who's the player there in the TVP, um, who was in Tornado last season, mm -hmm. is locked down by Kusok. And, uh, you know, it's a three versus two situation in the middle, if you don't count Luti Pavlo. 
This is an issue, and, and Wombat's being very all-encompassing, which is a, a terrifying thing. They are, they're they almost smothering Synergy by this point. You've got Kusa up, up on the hill doing consistent damage, trying to force that TVP into a really awkward predicament, and he has to come back into it. Kuso's going to find him, and that's weakened the backup of the tanks toward that central point can actually do. There's no more real crossfires put into place. Maybe one or two tanks can do some damage, but Just Cause finally goes down in the end. He was weak from the start there, but Karit taking the next bit of damage. You can see the counter-attack coming from Happy Bubble, but Karit still has a shot to be made comes in for it but a one shot now happy bubble does his job eventually breaking back into this and synergy on the real recount here they are not out of this one just yet good damage comes out again though bishop keeping wombats ahead in this one there are four tanks standing for synergy at this point and five on the other side but there we go breakneck again finds dreamlike and piece by piece is wombats breaking down synergy and synergy are falling like flies there goes another and as soon as that crossfire was broken broken wombats on tanks just went and had their way with synergy. Yeah, I mean, the bad chance of Wombats were out of position for a little bit, but once they did get in position, they started to flank. Then uh, Synergy wasn't aggressive enough. They didn't go forwards enough, so the one the 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 bat chats could simply shoot them uh, in the back. So that was you know a nice move there for Wombat. Slightly slow, but good stuff. I mean, let's be honest here. Once you have that lighthouse, um, it's it's you know really hard to lose. Um, you, you're super powerful up there. I mean, the grand finals, for instance, I saw you know Wombats with a similar strategy. And, uh, you know, obviously getting the better of Synergy here. Um, Luti Pablo less than that uh, TVP. <laughs> and, you know, Happy Bubble. I mean, he took down Kareets. Not bad. Um, I hate to say it, but they should have done it a little bit sooner. And here's the last one remaining. Yeah, and not for long. There we have it. One bats on tanks are going to take the scoreline to 3-1. to one. And Synergy again having to face the defeat against these guys. It's not too fun at this point. They've got to be thinking, geez, guys, we had it almost again. They were trading almost favorably at the start. They were in a good position. You know, I guess it, it wasn't the best position, but they, they weren't at a massive disadvantage. They still retained the hill to some degree. And then you saw a couple of tanks starting to go up there from Wombats on tanks. Yep. And it started to work out. So how do they always seem to be able to manage to find that weakness? I, I just don't know how they do it, Wombats on tanks. Well, I mean, the, f the fact that they took down that TVP early on is a massive advantage. I mean, you know, it's not as big advantage before, but taking down a tier 10 tank is obviously going to give you some, you know, leeway, some some ability to flex. I mean, the bat chats coming around the side, you know, using their speed um, is good stuff from them. Uh, and then they just kept the middle as well. I mean, they didn't they didn't give anything away to, to, to Synergy. And the fact that Synergy was just waiting there for Walmarts to come forwards, um, you know, expecting Walmarts to go all in like some other teams would do, um, which they didn't, you know, they just got the advantages um, and uh, that was really good. I mean, I, th I think Synergy should have probably at the beginning just gone for the exchanges, um, but obviously that's, uh, you know, hindsight's 20, 20. Um So, yeah, I mean, good play though, Wombats, you know, third round on the board now, starting to get starting to get ahead of the game a little bit. Yeah, and, and you can see this here. Kusok was doing so much work as well from mm. the top of that hill. Once he got up there, just taking it down piece by piece. And sadly for uh, Synergy, they just couldn't really find much more than that. But who stood out to you there? Anyone, anyone uh, catch your eye in that matchup? Or Yeah, well, uh, by the way, you know, if I saw some people in chat saying about the tank name. There's a difference between the tank name used by Big World, like the client, which which renders it all, and the tank name you see on the screen. So this tank name you can see there is the name of the tank in according to the game. So that's hmm. you know that's where we get it get it from. We get it from the game. So I mean um, that obviously has to be changed um, superficially, but it's a new tank, so that's why it, that's why it's happened. Um, I mean yeah, Kusok, fantastic work. He got the hill. Um, he did what he needed to do. He got that second tank um, down, and you can see the new player there, um, Crespix, just not having a particularly great game. Um, he was the one behind the house, taken down by Kusok, and yeah, basically the whole of uh, of uh, Synergy on that second page. Yeah, Synergy <laughs> just just seemed to be at the mercy of. Uh... <laughs> of one that's on tanks, but of course um, it's not over yet. There's a couple more maps to go, maybe. Steps. Ooh. Yeah, we're on to steps. Um, <laughs> typically a stronghold for one map, I have to say it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, not not feeling confident for the opponents here. But hey, prove me wrong, Synergy. I, I have full faith in you. And I can imagine the people at home are now going, probably should have voted for Wombats on Tanks a little bit quicker, yeah. to be fair, because it's still essentially Wombats on Tanks, let's be honest here. They may not, I, I think we'll see bigger challenges down the line. I think, sure. you know, people like Ding, your Kaznas, your Tornado Rocks, they're going to push them. There, there's, no, there's no dispute there. That will be a very close game, and that's what I'm really excited about towards the uh, later part of the season, of course, on, on towards the close. But, you know, yeah. so far, still looking relatively well-rounded, but I think this is not the test that I expected from them. Dropping one round to Synergy is still a little bit of a surprise, but... 
Yeah, Not I mean, over yet. you've got to remember as well. I mean, they've got to catch up four matches from last season. Most teams played six. So we're going to be seeing a lot of them, and that's actually going to take, you know, you know, it's going to it's going to take a toll on them. They got to play on on Thursday in two days' time, yep. and they got to play next week again. So you know, this is gonna this is gonna start to add up. Do they have time to train? Do they have time to recuperate? Do they have time to look at the matches? You know, if they're playing, having to play back to back, you know, I don't think that's going to affect you know their top six spot. But maybe looking at that typical first and second place, which they've been getting almost exclusively apart from last season. Maybe that's a little bit unrealistic for them, I'm not sure. Yeah, there could be several issues, but Melly, how are the people at home finding this? Because we're kind of theorizing how they're responding, but how are they actually finding it out there? Um, not too surprised, to be honest. Okay. Um, well, currently the vote uh, went up to solid 80% for Wombat and we Tanks. Go. Well, I fear for the lack of new tactics as well, w with having so many matches uh, in a row, mm -hmm. basically. But yes, people, your opinion on that, use the hashtag WGLU over at Twitter to tell us, well, what you expect from this very team uh, in the next few play days. And also, the vote is over, sadly. The next vote will be up in a few seconds for the next matchup. Um, thank you for getting involved. But of course, you can still participate via Twitter and tell us what's in your mind, just to see the trend of the community and how you guys are thinking. And... Um, expecting this match to go and yes that's uh, pretty much all currently they're in the third round and waiting for it to end uh, of course there is a bit of delay between what we do live because we don't want uh, anyone to be able to see let's sneaky, say from the teams tactics. exactly no sneaky sneaky tactics um but no obviously once you're catching up you'll be at the same school as us very very soon do not fear but i think yeah actually melee raised a very good point when when teams do have to play this much it, it does become a little bit of a burden on creating new tactics and adapting mm. the issues that they may have noted <laughs> i wish you guys had seen that melee just like dropped like four inches didn't see it she was like damn it and she was it. like up here she's gone boom <laughs> it was fantastic thank you for that melee just have I, a little I'm stick so i can just push the the lever <laughs> you should yeah the melee just like drops down just becomes like should midget. i do it again wait a second <laughs> <laughs> it was just great. Someone, make, corner of my eye. Someone make a gif of that. Yeah, gif please, <laughs> ladies and gents. There's a lot of you watching, by the way, so thank you very much for tuning in. We always do appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. I missed you all. Yes. Maybe. Some some of you, a very small amount. Just, just playing Kappa 1, Yorkshire 2, 3. Puddings and watching exactly. uh, daytime telly at home. Oh, Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> Woof. Fantastic work from him. It was beautiful. Shout out to he, Jeremy Kyle. Yeah, shout out to Jezza. We, we support <laughs> you here. At, uh, I feel like you'll be a good Jeremy Kyle audience member, Lauren. Oh, I'd love it. I judge people regardless, <laughs> so it'd be a perfect opportunity. But we are into the next map here. So let's see what we've got coming up. Now, we've noticed before this used to be a big stronghold for Wombats on Tanks. But... You know, times have changed, it's not quite the same anymore, you know, variations have come through to a degree. And what are we seeing from Synergy? This is a little different. Yeah, I mean, Synergy just trying to stop one match from taking that left side, um, which is, you know, to be expected. The attack on, on steps is one of the few maps where it's significantly in favor if you are playing it. So they're just trying to stop one match. They've done well. I mean, Kreets has taken a shot. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty standard though. We see we see a lot of teams do this, and it is very hard, regardless how good you are, to actually just storm through there and take down those tanks um, up in the north. So, Wombats, you know, they've got to play this game now. Where do I go? I mean, do I go to that right side as quickly as possible and try and get the trench before Synergy can go back there? Of course, Synergy has a, a faster route, so technically that's really hard to do. Or do I go to the right side a little bit? and then stop halfway and then go back towards the left side, hoping that Synergy has relocated. So there's a lot of mind games right now. I mean, World Tanks is, is it's a chess game, definitely. You're always thinking two or three steps ahead, and you can see Wombats are taking that advice. Yeah, so Wombats on Tanks, let's see if they fully commit to the rotate, or they just back away and then maybe slowly retake the ground towards the western side. This this is all up in the air. This is where we see the sometimes brilliance of Wombats on Tanks is how well they can manipulate their opponents into believing what they're doing, but it does seem as though they are he still heading down slightly further, but they've not fully rotated just yet, but they are en route. Now, no one is in those eastern trenches so far. They've left one RU251 slightly further up towards the north in that F area, or F line, F2, something around those lines. Um, uh, just maybe just to keep these guys busy to not give them a clear run over and make sure that you know it's not completely clear and do a little bit of damage. That is Kareet. He was the one who caught a little bit of the flack at the start. He's going to be spotted out back away and make sure Synergy are constantly questioning: Is there anyone else here? Mm -hmm. Are they waiting? And he's buying them time at this point. Kareet may go down for this, so he's got to be careful. Dreamlike is in a really good spot. 
just about missing that shell, but he doesn't miss it for the third time of asking. And Dreamlike will take him down, and that will now mean Synergy might become very quickly aware that where's the rest of Wombats on tanks? Yeah, exactly. I mean, because they were going for Crete's, um, they had to obviously commit more than one tank there, so that's allowed Wombats towards that right side. I mean, it's going to be hard now for Synergy to dig them out for sure. A lot of the teams which have the right side without taking too much damage, you're okay. They've They've lost that RU251. It's not a big deal, though, um, for what they've gained. Now, Synergy just have to execute, right? Um, they have to get the spots for Happy Bubble. Um, to be fair, I mean, Happy Bubble is, is a great choice in the artillery for the position there and now. But still, it's going to... It's, it's going to have to be Synergy going in. It's going to have to be them surrounding Wombats around that cap circle, trying to get the exchange right. And um, that's what the game's all going to be about. Well, the cap is underway. Time is on 17 seconds and counting the retake coming in from Synergy. They have to take this fight and they have to take it well. It's not going to be easy. The Wombats on tanks are dug in. Heels are deep into the ground of that eastern side here with eight seconds left. John takes one on the fly. Doesn't get too much damage at all, though. And we'll be seeing this going down to those last couple of seconds. Three seconds left and no shots to be fired. There we go. Finally, the reset comes in. But at what cost? John gets sent packing on 839 HP. On the other side, though, Wombats on tanks are going very, very low here. This is a nicely executed bit of a retake coming in from Synergy. Keeping tanks alive and doing the damage. But Breakneck finds John, finding that weak little target that was looking ever so vulnerable. But look at this damage. It's not focused right now from Synergy. They're just taking on several targets, but not taking them down. Pavel finds one more. This is not going perfectly for Synergy anymore. But where's that rest of the damage going to come from? Pavel going to do some work, but Mielov finds Coca-Cola. And this is a brawl to write home about. It's such a big brawl. I mean, Synergy, of course, is you know, struggling a little bit because of those two autoloaders. But the STB ones are starting to get over. And of course, he has to be better hold down tank than the uh, the Object 140. And the artillery really paying dividends. This is brilliant stuff coming out from Synergy. Their retake was very well constructed. The damage eventually going towards the right targets. Pavel can do a little bit on the way out. But I think we all know this one is done and dusted. I think he knows it as well with the full tanks so close by the ramp coming out from dream like one more shell will seal the deal and it'll be signed sealed oh it won't be delivered he at least takes down one on his way me off does close down but it's synergy picking up the round really nicely played and considering one bats on tanks did get to that eastern side they did get hunkered down three seconds away from the cap that's pretty decent from synergy to stop it yeah really nice um they executed really well they had uh you know, an objective, they pushed in, they got the early exchange, they got the, the first kill, and then uh, they just slowed Wombats down. What You can see Wombats slightly confused. They, they go for Mursky, then they go for John. They push over, they take over John, but they got Mursky and another STB there. They go for him, you know, there's no there's no real direction here for Wombats. And because they're split, they're, they're susceptible from fire from both sides. And then, you know, having Happy Bubble on that M40, just utilizing the fact that the rest of the team has uh, slowed Wombats down makes it a lot easier for the M40 to hit. You're only talking about three, 400 meters there from uh, the exchange, so even that inaccurate, um, relatively long reload time artillery can uh, do some work. And yeah, fantastic stuff there from Synergy. Dreamlike is an absolute beast in that batch yet, and uh, mm. yeah, really worked out well for them. I'm actually very surprised because it does take a lot it, it takes quite a brave team to actually take that fight as well because you know going back to the very start obviously once you know prior to that um eastern brawl kicking off in yep. the west they actually did take the initial challenge let's say against wombats and tank on tanks they they did go there they traded out well they eventually took down was it Kareets who went down first i'm trying to think yeah Kareets went down first in the ru251 and, and even then you know they're, they're they're playing well that's brave play but then again it's still up in the air, there's still another half to be played. You know, currently we're at 3-2 scoreline. I think if it gets any closer, I'd be very surprised, to be honest. I think this mm. is this is a nice performance, though, from Synergy, certainly. Um, just showing that they're not one to be messed with. As you can see there, I think you're, you're noting Dreamlike's performance and living up to that name. Really nice the bit of damage are, dealt. The dude's in the top three of the damage um, of all the players in the WGL so, so far. And he's, uh, you know, a new player to the, uh, the team of Synergy. But you can see, when we were talking at the beginning of the show, like, Synergy, they have... You know, a couple of great players, you know, Dreamlight being one of them, mm. um, Mielof being another, but, you know, like, where are the rest of, of, of Synergy? And we'll you find got, out when it goes down to the Exactly, like, page. you see it, you see that <laughs> a lot. You see it, you know, a massive dis disparity between the two sides of the team. And uh, Bishop doing zero damage, he got cancelled out straight away, and, um, you know, he's not a star player, but he's certainly a, a guy who can play, play very well in the Object 140. So, you can see... You know, Wombats aren't really well versed for 768 right now. Not in comparison to who they were. That's the thing. It's, you know, if there are any other team coming to this, we, you know, 
it would be a lot harder to be slightly cynical. But mm. when it is Wombats on Tanks, when they have this reputation to bear, when they have that little bit of a burden, we expect a lot because they were exceptionally good. You know, they, they had an undefeated season. They were those guys. And to see them even dropping round to this point, it's like, huh, what's going on? <laughs> Bishop not playing well? What? It's a little bit baffling. But still, as we said, there's another half coming your way any second now. So guys do get ready to get under the... Uh, oh. Underway, as it is 3-2, as said. Wombats on tanks now on the defending side up towards the north and Synergy on the attack towards the south. What do we make of this so far? So technically now Synergy on the, the better side to play on. About 61% of the time we see, 62% of the time we see the attackers win on this map. Um, not the most played map in the world, though. Of course, that's more been towards uh, mines these days. So um, Karit's going for an early spotting run. Interesting that Wombats haven't gone for any boost. A lot of these teams have... Oh, that's a big mistake there from Crete's blowing his, uh, his uh, ammo, uh, his, um, his repair kit straight away, and now he's got taken down 711. That's a big mistake. You can see how fine the line is between uh, these two teams. Is, um, when you make a mistake, you get punished straight away. Now, Crete is definitely dead. The rest of his team is behind, though, in support, so since you can't go too far forwards. No, but Dreamlike was the one to do the initial damage, and John's going to close down. So once again, just highlighting how good that guy is. He, he finds something to work with. And again, Karit's being picked up first, doing little to no damage and well, doing very much else. He, he might have found out the initial information, I guess. To, to some degree, there is a silver lining in that fact. But by now, since you aren't in a bad position at all. Yeah, Synergy, a great position. They've taken down that RU251, which of course worked out very nicely for them in that previous round, where Crete also went down early on. And um, I guess that is Crete. Often we find, you know, Crete's dying and Wombat's still winning. Um, the guy seems to, you know, like a lot of men only can do one thing at the same time. <laughs> um, he's obviously the leader for, for Wombat, uh, along with Kusok. So Synergy now in the right side, they've got the cap under control. Wombat's in the north with a kind of strange tactic. Uh, Breaknik, though, has a good angle onto Happy Bubble. He does have to scamper behind some of those bushes to get the camo up. And, um, yeah, I mean, Synergy can just stay where they are. Um, Wombat doesn't have uh, any artillery, so they're not going to get reset unless uh, Wombat's push in. They have the numbers advantage. Okay, let's see how this one goes then. <laughs> Synergy throwing down the gauntlet here, and Wombat's on tanks ready and willing to take that challenge with a little bit of centralized fire towards that stv one but still look at it coming back here kusok gets melted milov does the damage and look at john as well that's his second pickup in this game and now the four tanks remaining on one bats on tanks gonna be scratching their heads wondering what the hell went wrong this is unbelievable stuff again synergy doing some real work the three tanks remaining are in no man's land and look at bishop surrounded he might be able to do a couple more shots than last time but it's nothing to write home about as once again it's synergy doing exactly what we expected. I mean, Wombats came from every angle there and they just got cancelled out from every angle. There was no real direction. Um, you could see how Synergy, they pushed like three or four tanks in onto one position, concentrating their firepower. And that's where they were on the previous round. Here, Wombats went for more of a 754 kind of style where you, you surrounded that cap a little bit more. You have a tank on the off angle and you, you try and get the consistent damage. But of course, it just didn't end up working mm. out for them there. And uh, yeah, I mean, straight away, I mean, Kusok got melted, a couple more tanks got melted after that, and then that was an easy win for Synergy. It really was. I, At the start of it, I was like, okay, well, this is a fair and even game, and you know, so forth and so on. But then as soon as they got themselves in that cap, you could just see every position was covered off. They were in a, a nice way to hold them back. They were expecting the counterplay, and the damage they dealt towards Kusok and Pavel almost instantaneously was mm. fantastic. And bear in mind, Coca-Cola and Bishop were in a real small position to do anything. They were just left to watch. Exactly. I mean, they, they weren't exchanging. They weren't getting the damage back onto um, onto the, to avenge their basically fallen comrades. So, yeah, definitely not good. If you're going to lose a tank, you want to be doing either more damage or preferably more damage or taking out another team's tank, which, uh, of course, you know, one match didn't do either of. So, yeah, I mean, uh, two losses on steps, everything's even, and I never expected that to. Be no, 3-3. Three, three. You guys at home didn't expect it either. Of course, 80% of you sitting in favour to Wombats on tanks, you might start to be uh, questioning those choices. But then again, they did have a glorious start to this. They looked very strong, a little slip up here or there, you know, losing out on one round. You're like, oh, it is what it is. Maybe a little overzealous, maybe a little overconfident. But now, I think we've got a bit of a game on our hands. And looking through the stream, like, I, I don't think I've seen a, a single post-battle stat when he's not in the top three. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as I said, the guy's great. 
Um, you can see in this battle as well, I mean, there wasn't a lot of blind shots, there wasn't a lot of build up because the average damage is pretty similar to what the Alpha is on those tanks. Um, yeah, I mean, the STVs, the bat chats at the top, the 140s again not paying off well, therefore, um, one mats on tanks. And um, yeah, th the four top players there are all Synergy players. Such a quick round, such an obviously uh, biased one. Again, Crete's getting taken out early with some very sloppy driving. Jumping off to the side of a, a pretty tall cliff, not expecting to get d but of course he does, and he falls for that. And yeah, ru 251s fast, but it's easy to hit, and you know, it's not not a T-50 that's true. Like, you can't just drive around the map um, willy-nilly and not expect to get taken down. So, a couple of issues coming to the forefront. Do we know Do we know what our next map is? Muravanka. Okay. So talk to me about this, because uh, my mind doesn't really ring many bells when we talk about Wombats on tanks on this map, because mm. obviously they haven't played too much of this season. So, how much do we know of them on this map itself? Well, they got beaten by Kazakuru in the Season 5 Finals on it, um, and uh, that's you know basically the history, getting beaten. But uh, that, that's it, it's just close the book done. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. I Hopefully mean, they've worked on that since. <laughs> I, we have a, I have, we, again, we haven't seen a lot of them this season because they just haven't been playing um, Synergy. Uh, they had that game against Ding, I think, where they played well. Um, you know, they're really good at just, you know, getting the exchanges in those positions. And they seem to have got more confident. Like, at the beginning of Minds, they were pa kind of slow and, you know, passive and not going yeah, for it. a little hesitant almost. And yeah, exactly. Doing, yeah. A little hesitant. And then now you can see they have some confidence on steps. They've kind of shaken off, oh, it's one bets on tanks, oh, it's first pro. Um, those kind of uh, thoughts, and uh, they're starting to get some good results now. It's good. This, this actually could be a very interesting map coming through for them. Um, as you said, we don't know that much about Wombats on Tanks on this. They've suffered some losses previously at the worst points, uh, and I'm curious to see how much they've changed and how much they've adapted, and if this is one of the maps they've been working on. However, on the other side, Synergy haven't had the worst results in the world here. So this could be a very big game coming out. 3-3 three, three is the scoreline, guys and girls. This is a perfect welcome back to this glorious game after that uh, holiday break and we'll be seeing them going head to head here and I'm curious as to how this goes I I, I, I don't want to put a, a scoreline on this if I'm honest Ollie are you willing to put you know your, your thoughts which team's going to walk away with this one well I mean it's going to be hard we haven't seen I think we've only seen yeah we've only seen two rounds of synergy on this map um, they've won one there's lost one so I haven't seen a lot of them mm. um, but you know uh, is always good. I mean, these teams obviously train all the maps, um, and Murvank is one of the more complicated to play. It's a little bit corridory um, with that left side. Um, you can see um, Synergy on the defensive side have just set up there straight away. Again, which, you know, what's really worked out for them is Happy Bubble in the artillery. He's picking that one up again, and um, yeah, I mean, maybe not the most wise idea considering the speed of Wombats' lineup and the fact that on Murvank there's so many obstacles and bushes. You don't really stay spotted for too long several issues across this map that can cost either side some brilliant positions and Bishop has been found out look at this pickup to start with he's down to a one shot stunning stuff closed down by Dreamlike but that was a team effort John being involved that TVP in the back lines as well uh, and a perfect beginning for Synergy being able to get a free tank almost on that one uh, I don't know I, was he uh, was he I've... tracked did he disconnect I mean to me there's I uh, looked on the left and right side and those tracks were up so not sure what happened there. Maybe he just got instantly perma-tracked. Um, obviously, have to have a look through the replay once we mm. do um, do have a chance. So, yeah, I mean, the most perfect start since you could ask for. Pavel basically offering himself on a, up on a silver platter. Tier 10 tank down, object 140 down. I mean, he's had an awful few rounds. He did zero damage in that previous round we saw. Um, and, uh, you know, two, two rounds ago even. So, yeah, great stuff here from Synergy. They're on the defensive side, they don't need to do anything, they just need to keep Wombats at bay, try and get some information. As that cap does start though for Crete. It does, they, they, they've had to go back to their plan at this point. Sure, they lost out on one, but still, they really do have to find a bit of silver lining here. Synergy can't be allowed to do any more. Kusok actually did receive a little bit of damage as well, so this is not looking too favorable thus far, but Synergy now looking for opportunities needing to keep themselves in this game they can't allow wombats on tanks to build back an advantage to build themselves into this matchup which is something they are very good at doing as said earlier if they find a weakness they will certainly look to exploit it now 70 seconds of this cap of course it isn't the biggest deal just yet but it may make that tank of Milov have to commit at some point to stop it but there are tanks as well just cause off towards the flank keeping that kind of southeastern side very very safe and secure What's the tactic here coming out from Synergy in the end, you feel, to, to, to deny this cap? Well, they, they're starting to 
um, accumulate some of their tanks on that left side just below the hill and they're going to push in at some point uh, again you know they have that tier 10 advan uh, tank advantage they can just send john you know the fastest tank there in the bat chat forwards oh. and they get great damage onto creeds brilliant 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 play again and there's the artillery to just really add insult to injury creeds sent packing at this point and barry mancusok being damaged as well i think he just got lit up so they know where he is this is a real vulnerability coming out for wombats on tanks they've got to be cautious by this point you can see already john training his eyes towards kusok's position yeah, John, uh, obviously with five shells left in that bat check can do a lot of work. But I mean, at Synergy, they should just be going forwards. They've got almost a 3,000 um, hit point lead. They've got all seven tanks alive, whilst uh, Wombats have basically only five when you consider Crete's as, you know, obviously a one shot. Um, so, yeah, I think Synergy could you know, push, for instance, Just Cause. He's kind of unsupported. Um, Pavel. And they can do anything they want. Um, I think they have such an advantage that even on the defensive side, they should probably just go in. They should just go for it. And um, I guess, you know, the obvious move from, from Wombats would just be to put Kareeds back in the cap and go for exactly what they went for last time. So here we go. You can see the play now coming through. That TVP going head first. Kusok is the weak link, and they want to take it down. They want to do the damage here, but good fire coming in on the cross. Not be picked up a free, but Dreamlike again closing this one down. Good stuff from him, but not doing all the work here. Murs got to be careful in the trade out coming in on that eastern side. Takes another shell. That's from the south of Bat Chat. It was just caused doing the damage, but not enough to take them down here. But Coca Cola's found John, and suddenly Synergy aren't looking too perfect in this and there's opportunities here for Wombats but their HP is so low. Karit is down to nothing. Pobble's caught out in the open. Dreamlike is doing what he can. He exchanges every single shell, backs away and you can see that <laughs> it's just one by one these guys are just closing them down. Synergy, I've got to say it, they, they, they should be able to close this game almost to the victory here. Yeah, I mean it's going to be uh, four for Synergy. That's a guaranteed one point on the board. Um, that's obviously a tiebreaker if Wombats also get another round on the board. So yeah, it's going well for Synergy. You've got to remember they were 3-1 down, down at the beginning off to Cliff. So they've really come back into this game and for sure they've got this round. I mean, they've got Luti Pavlo in the T1 5 full HP Dreamlike, still fairly healthy. Okay, Mursk, uh, Mursky and Mirlov and uh, Crest picks are all pretty low, but um, as long as they coordinate well and link up well, it should not be a problem. Although we have seen some, some good pickoffs here from uh, for one that's when Sinji have been low on some tanks. And to be honest, I mean, a thousand hit points between the two teams, not massive. Mirlov is a weak link. He really is. And well, Brainneck should be able to find him, but Heavy Bubble in the back line is not exactly the tank to do much about it. But Brainneck whiffing the shots here, just not doing what he needs to. And Mirlov at least doing some great work. And oh, Brainneck's been set on fire. Look at the damage he's received for this. Oh my God, you've got to be just so annoyed at that in the end. That should have been a clean pickup for him. Now he's looking a little more vulnerable. They are getting some damage done here. Coca Cola is going to have to be the man to do it all. I feel sorry there for for Breakneck because that just shouldn't happen at the end of the day. But Dreamlike going on to Coca Cola, that uh, Leopard has no armor whatsoever. Yeah, Coca Cola going to be ripped to shreds and he knows it. Breakneck's gone down. It's a matter of time. Just Kareed standing. 1v4, Kareed. Let's see what you got in the 1390, I believe. I think you can do all of this. <laughs> just on the run. Just believe. That's all you need to do, yeah. Kareed. I'm praying for you, man. That's it. I mean, Mursky's two shot. Dreamlike's a one shot. Happy Bubble's two shot. Luzi Pavlo is like a... A lot shot. It's 12 <laughs> shot. So it could, be, it could be tricky. But I mean, we've seen like before, you know, two, uh, one versus one, for instance. And, uh, you know, it going for like two or three minutes because <laughs> this map has just so much diversity on it. And, um, you know, the caps aren't exactly close together. Yeah. So Crete is just going to be playing this one out. I think, you know, it's you know going to be kind of a tactical pause for them to see, you know, what did, what went right, what went wrong, why are we starting to lose these rounds? You know, aren't we you know, well versed on, on steps and Muravanka? As Mursky does get spotted by Crete in that AMX 1390. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of Wombats thinking here. Yeah, Crete, <laughs> he's not going down without a fight. And he will, it will manage to stay alive a little longer, which is actually impressive as it is time for them to discuss of course, there's one more half to be played out on this one. And Happy what? Bubble. Wait, what, what? That was Happy Bubble? Was that a blind shot? That was insane. Mind blown. <laughs> what? Uh, I mean, the thing is, like, you can see, obviously, that Synergy knew where the AMX 1390 was, but... Uh, what? I, either there's two things that happened there. Happy Bubble just, you know, I mean, it's artillery. It's, it's so super frustra frustra frustrating to play because sometimes the shell doesn't land where you want it to shell, so to land. So maybe Happy Bubble shot at the bush which Crete was in 
and it kind of landed outside the circle and hit Kreets as he's running away. <laughs> or, 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 or actually, no, I saw I saw some um, Kreets broke some fence there, and you know, obviously Happy Bubble saw the fence being broken, and uh, obviously 74 HP on MX1390, you just you know need to blow it over a little bit and it dies. Great stuff there for now. That's I I. That's a class. That's, 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 that's a, actually a <laughs> classical artillery player, which you don't see anymore. Like you as artillery, you're always looking around the map, seeing what's being broken, and then making the shot based on what tank you think's going to be there, how fast it's going to be driving without seeing it, and try and go for the blind shot. I'm still. <laughs> I, I, I'm just hoping we get a replay on that if if we could. I I, I don't know if we can, but um, yeah, I, I can already see that there was Art Clit in chat having a good little uh, discussion. And I'm sure he'll enjoy watching a nice bit of Arty play towards the end. And just I just want to watch this back. So. Kareets is still spotted, and he will break that fence, as you noted at this point. So, the sh no. He breaks something. No, he doesn't break anything. <laughs> he was spotted, though. He, like, was spotted. he was spotted. He was spotted. For a while. And enough time for Happy Bubble to Dude, land his shell somewhere, somewhere in the vicinity of that tank. And I mean, I think, MVP. I think you've got, like, on a T92, you've got, like, a 12-meter splash or something. 15-meter splash. And the M40, I think you've got somewhere around the 9-meter, 10-meter mark. And you only need to be within that range before the MX-1390 to die. So great stuff, yeah. Really, really impressive. Uh, thank you for the replay, though, guys. Hopefully you guys at home enjoyed that as well. Um, but yeah, like let's talk through this game as, as how it went down. Because mm. at the start, you know, there was there was a relatively clean pickup for Synergy here. And we didn't really know what happened in regards to that. It seemed as though it was kind of just a Bishop... I mean, Bishop died, and that's like game issues. over already. Yeah, I, he's, he's clearly still playing. He's making shots. I, I think he's spotted by Dreamlike. Maybe. He's spotted by Dreamlike, gets taken down. I mean, tier 10 tank out of the game. Yeah, I mean, he, there's a bush there, so he thought he could go forwards. But I'm not sure. Maybe he, sh maybe he misclicked, mm. got um, perma-tracked, or the bush just simply wasn't enough uh, to keep him hidden. Well, a couple of issues costing Wombat's a clean game. This is Synergy with a chance to actually pick up the victory. This is exactly what we wanted to see. A real performance coming out here. And let's see, you know, anything really surprising you so far from the picks, or is this pretty much what you expect from these two? Well, since you've been picking that lineup, like pretty much the whole the game, yeah. um, bat chats M40, uh, T110, of course, um, a little bit strange, of course, they're on the attack now. So that slower tank is picked quite often, but not too often. Whilst one bats have gone for the object 140s, T110 as well, mx 1390s SDBs, and a bat chat. So again, with the object 140s, which haven't really worked out for one bats too much. You can see Synergy have gone for the STBs more and the TVPs, so be interesting to see. I mean, this is match point at the end of the day. Synergy are only one round away from winning. So, the MVP, if you're going damage-wise, is definitely this man on your screen right now, Dreamlike. They're going to spot out Pobble to begin with as well. And he does get lit up too, so needs to be a little cautious on that one. But still, he has been playing out of his mind throughout this game, so... Uh, <laughs> Credit where it's due, you know. I think Happy Bubble, of course, will be forever remembered, at least in my mind, for that shot. But it has been a consistent dreamlike show, so I'm, I'm wondering if he can be one of the defining factors as you know, as to how this game does end up closing down. But nine minutes on the board, plenty of time mm. for Synergy to build something from. But what are their initial plans? Because they're once again playing very passively, almost reminiscent of how they approached Mines at some point. Yeah, they are playing um, a little bit slower. I mean, they're on the attack, so they have to either kill all the Wombats or or cap one of the two um, caps on the minimap. So, yeah, this is a little bit slower. I mean, Wombats, to be honest, are, are playing into that by going more aggressive. Um, they've only left the SDP and the 110 in, obviously, the two most important positions. And they sent basically all their other tanks towards this right side. Um, Kreets went first with the Binos to spot out and uh, didn't find anything. So maybe... We'll be seeing if Wombat is setting up some sort of trap, expecting the slower synergy to go for that uh, right side cap. It's, I wouldn't say it's an all-in play, but it's certainly a a little more weighted towards that eastern side. And as you said, if synergy do eventually go for that, the problem being that if they go to it too late and they don't have time to recover or maybe adapt their strategy, they'll just be caught into this, whether or not it does trade favorably towards the Wombats or Synergy themselves. So it's going to be a gamble here at this point, but you've got to keep your eyes on where Synergy now take themselves. If they do head towards the east through the, you know, the Magic Forest, maybe then you might see some trouble coming out. Great artwork. Fantastic. Trap. Trap confirmed. Alex Cockensia, our observer. Um, yeah, along, doing a glorious along with job. Magus, of course, everyone knows who he is. And um, yeah, I mean, that's a trap. The 
To be honest, I mean, Synergy are looking like they're going towards that left side, but John's been spotted, Dreamlike's been just spotted. Walmats aren't moving, so they are, you know, they have left this right uh, left side open you know, for the taking if Synergy wants it. And it seems as though they do. They are certainly dabbling with the idea of a John putting himself in a good little spot here. He can get that one started any second now if he fancies it. And Pavel going to be pressured back. You can see those artillery shells arcing towards his position. But that will mean that Pavel will adjust, actually. And you can see the counter rotate coming out from the south toward the east. They're going to be flying through this map. And I want to see if Synergy can even respond to this. Mirlov is now in real trouble. He can see them encroaching through the trees. Karit's just caused Coca-Cola all closing the net here. Mirlov is trying to make a match. Mad dash for this out of there, but he's going to be caught in the heels. And look at the damage coming in. He just about makes it to some form of cover. But by this point, where is the counter damage going to come from? They've got to be able to deal some back. And Coca-Cola gets a lot toward him, as does Just Cause. Again, it is not going to be an easy one here for Wombats on tanks. They are taking a lot of damage, and Milov is waiting in the wings to try and get a little bit of damage done back to those who hurt him earlier. Yeah, um, oh. nice little shot there from wow. Happy Bubble. That's put him on a one shot, and Milov does pick him out. Brilliant Wombo combo coming out then. The artillery shell just landing right next to him and an easy pickup in the end coming through. But now let's see what we're going to see from Wombats. You can see that the pressure on toward the cap is going to be mounting. Synergy are putting players there by the numbers. Two tanks towards the south, several towards the east. Breakneck peering over and making the shot, but can he pull it off? This could be Synergy picking up the win very, very soon if they keep this sort of pace up. The damage has come through, but you've got to bear in mind, of course, Breakneck does keep a considerable amount of HP in this one, but that cap is not looking so light. Anymore. Yeah, Wombats are still a thousand hit points ahead, but that's starting to go away as Mialov does so much damage oh, to Bishop, wow, he has one shot, doesn't need it. He goes down, they trade it out, but in the end, look at the damage being dealt. Wombats, they're going low here, and Breakneck takes some more. Povel's taking another shell. Povel is down to a one shot, and where is your boy Dreamlike in this one? He doesn't need it. John's there to do the damage. Maybe not as quite a cool name, but still. You know, he gets the job done. Four tanks remaining now for Wombats on tanks. And it's soon going to be three as Breakneck is caught. He is going to be just destroyed any second now. One more shot will do it. And we are waiting to see who will be placing that one firmly towards that tank's position as I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by Synergy in this game. Kusok now taking his fair share. And this, from start to finish, has been an uphill struggle for Synergy. If they close this game down, in this manner, I will be thoroughly impressed with them, and they certainly deserve a place in a, 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 a far more favourable spot in the community's minds here, as now just those three tanks do stand. You can see them all closing in from Synergy. 4k with them, a little low, but a nice shared load of damage that came towards them means that they can stand together and get the job done. Coca-Cola looking for Merz, though, as Kusok is down to that one shot. It'll take one person to just deliver one shell. Dreamlike's looking for it. He wants this one. He's had a bit of a quiet game in comparison to before, but Coca-Cola find Merz. John into the 1v1. Dreamlike has the shell, and this should be over and done with Kusok staring down the barrel of defeat, and it will be Synergy picking up a 5-3 victory over Wombats on tanks. Do you know what? If, if that sort of, let's say it was Verse Pro against Synergy a couple of seasons ago, you know, yeah. varying different players, varying different names, varying different maps and game modes, maybe I would have believed that scoreline. But these days with these players, the amount of issues Synergy have had, they still pick up that win. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, a four-round comeback after after uh, Cliff. So a fantastic work from Synergy. Wow. I mean, I don't think anyone really expected that. I mean, I obviously haven't seen the screens of Wombats. I'm not sure exactly how much training they've done. We did theorize that there could be some issues, um, considering they, they were training for 754 all the, all the time. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I was looking at Na'Vi and Hellraiser's play on the weekend, and they also looked a little bit shaky in some respect. Mm -hmm. And they were also training for WCA. So I think, you know, Wombats have issues right now with 768. Um, they obviously haven't done too much work and getting be beaten by Synergy, which is, you know, an unpredictable team. Sometimes they have great results, sometimes yep. they have bad results. And maybe this is just their, their, their on day. But, I mean, we had a situation there where they were, you know, just brawls all around the map. And that's normally a situation which Wombat wins. I, they used to be the team that had it all. They had, they were the, the whole package, weren't they? You know, they could win the brawls. They had great fight coordination, mm. good tactics. You know, maybe they were never the most creative players. I think that was their only ever one downside. They never picked up those kind of a uh, little bit may, maybe new tanks that people were kind of messing with until they were 100% certain of them. But they would never lose games like this normally. And this is a curious sight to be seen considering how many games they're going to be playing very soon back to back. You know, constant play days for these boys. They're going to have to keep themselves prepared. But still... Great stuff from Synergy. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely deserve it. I yes. think after such a tricky season um, last season, I think 
you know they they deserve to get some good wins and uh, you know look at that top six top six spot and actually go for a finals place as well maybe. Well, if they're picking up victories against Wombats on tanks, it's certainly putting them in a good stead. But still, enough from us. Uh, that was uh, a, a brilliant display. And of course, we do have more games coming up very soon. But if, we need to check in with Melly because the community is going to be absolutely livid at this one. Because I can see the kind of you know the uh, the, the the Russians in chat um, becoming a little more lively. Are very upset. To, they're going to be very it, soon. To name a child. Yes, yeah, they're, they're, they are now already, and um, I really can't wait. Uh, Oof. For the next round to end uh, on their ends at yep. least, and um, well, they're most of them are already expecting a win for Synergy, and <laughs> I mean, I still haven't processed completely what happened. I'm just trying to rewatch the last round to understand that actually Synergy took down Wombats on tanks, which <laughs> only 21% of the community well expected. I, I'm blown away by it. I'm, I'm so, I'm so impressed. I don't know. Not a great start to uh, the season, basically. Is it no, yeah. not really. Well, how no. many games did uh, Wombat on Tanks play before? Was it two? Two. So they've only played two games prior to this, yeah. and they've come back after the break, and hey guys, welcome to a loss, you know? I mean, Wombat's in the whole World Tanks history have 86% win ratio. The, their whole history? Yeah. That's insane. Well, and not like the entire history, not when they the play like majority. Star Ladder or like yeah. all the other <laughs> tournaments, but like but within season three, four, five, six, Obviously, now it's called season one, season two. Yeah. But yeah, you can wow. see a lot of games, basically. So, Melly, you know, it's crazy. What, what else can we say so about I, this? My eyes are glued to, to the chat trying to figure out what the Russian viewers that happily visitors to, uh, visited us today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you're having a good Privet. time besides the, uh, the, the current standings. But um, yes, people, the next vote is already online. So head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU and get involved. We'll be rewarding three correct answers. Well, the fastest three correct predictions in our team vote uh, with three bonus codes, well, one each. And of course, we want to read from you via t uh, Twitter as well. Use the hashtag WGLU to get in touch with us. And people are already questioning, Oli, how you can actually remember all those stats and standings and well, and we think like, he yeah, makes that's it up. What I, do. I was just making it up. <laughs> just he just lies with one, real two, conviction. One, two, ten, six. It's great. No, it's, uh, it's been six years now, I think, of World of Tanks community. That's it crazy. has a, an adverse effect to my health, knowing this stuff, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. He forgets your basic things, you, yeah. but he will but be able to tell you. Sometimes exactly. I don't put trousers on in the morning and uh, I walk We've out my front door. We've had issues in the office. We've had know. problems. And uh, yeah, everyone gets a... Yeah, we an try eyeful. to. Yeah, but well, <laughs> if you have talking about the 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 English pants, not the American pants. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just so make, no, thank just, you. For just make it even worse. Trousers. Yes. Is what he, he was talking to. Yeah. Yes. Ollie. Yeah. Well, yes, people. If you have further <laughs> questions, head over to Twitter. Use the hashtag WGLU uh, to ask them, and I will forward them toward to experts, getting you the answer. Some of them I also can answer, but, well, very few actually. Also, eu.wgleak.net yeah. is the place to go when you want to see how the teams have performed throughout the season so far. Yeah, the stats and leaderboards and Hall of Fames all over there. Good, Very good interesting place. stuff, so you should definitely check it out and also keep an eye on worldoftanks.eu for all the news revolving the World of Tanks meta and, of course, giveaways. Uh, gold Series highlights. Yeah, Gold Series highlights. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. I mean, the teams are really, you know, Season 1 was already good, but Season 2 has been awesome. Um, obviously, a lot more people play Tier 10s than they do Tier 8, so... Um, has some super good stuff like today I saw Ding's promo fantastic work by those boys <laughs> um, yeah it's great absolutely all right. Well, it's awesome to hear, obviously, from you guys at home that you're enjoying the show as well. So do give your feedback and your thoughts. And to anyone who has missed us, let us know that you've missed no us one. because uh, I need eat my ego boosted because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a sad person. It's been the holidays. I had to eat my feelings. Now I don't. Now I talk to you guys at home instead. So, guys, we're going to take a very short break where I find some cake or something to fill my face <laughs> with just so I don't start crying. And when we're back, we'll be kicking off with another game follow-up, which is Utopia up against Tornado Rocks.